as far as the impact on Israel, unfortunately, it was a negative impact. I have, I'm an Israeli citizen and then I have family, uh, Palestinians inside 48. And for the first time, I had friends and family inside 48 said that after the flotilla attack, they literally felt scared to speak Arabic um, because Israeli society had become so radicalized, so fascist. Um, and you had huge demonstrations with people, Israelis chanting death to Arabs, even and bad things against Turkey. So it radicalized a lot of people. So it had the opposite effect. However, in we firmly believe although strategically looking at this, you want to pull Israelis away from supporting their government. Obviously, you don't want them to become more radicalized. What we think will happen is over time, as they see you know, this kind of international action increasing, they will be forced to take a look internally. Because when they find, again, that they are not able to travel certain places, that they have all of these uh, lawsuits against their officials, that they personally aren't able to enjoy life as they want to because of this international uh, boycott on them. They're going to, most Israelis just want to live a, a, a normal European style life. And when they suffer more and more from that, we believe that they're going, this trend of you know, becoming more radicalized is going to reverse itself. And when you weigh it up against you know, again, you don't want Israelis to become more radicalized, but does that mean we should stop doing this kind of action? When you weigh the positives and negatives, we thought, no, we have to continue with this kind of action. And this negative, we believe, will turn around um, and start operating the other way. But, as, but there is an element inside Israel of, of uh, people, of activists, that are really dynamic. That Palestinians say that these people, I mean, they love them. They say they are more Palestinian. They are more Palestinian than most Palestinians. They know these are Israeli citizens that are every day in Palestinian villages. Where wherever there's an Israeli attack on Palestinians, they are there. Wherever there's a Palestinian demonstration and they're called, they are there. And they have been arrested with us. They have been shot with us. They have been severely injured uh, with us and faced the beatings and, and everything else right alongside Palestinians. Um, and this movement, we hope, will grow. It's it's small, and when you look at the Israeli media, they try to demonize them, and that these are radical, crazy people, you know, conspiring with the enemy. But but we're encouraging that to grow, and these people are really do provide a, a ray of hope. But as far as like campaigning together for, you know, democracy, what effectively you ask for is kind of the one state option where citizens are given. Uh, equal Palestinians are given citizenship and, and equal rights. Um, there is a growing movement of people working on that. Uh, Palestinians mainly in the diaspora around the world and even inside Palestine, the, the movement and the, the realization that this is, uh, this is our better option strategically and in the long run is growing. However, the continued, I mean the, the PLO position continues to be, so the official you know, position continues to be that we are working for a two-state solution. And the, the is Palestinian leadership, um, the ones that do go and negotiate, they only use the one-state card as a threat, almost a threat to Israelis, which is, has become old. Uh, but there is a movement to get them to recognize that we need to shift towards uh, the one-state option. And, and more and more, the PLO and the Palestinian Authority are completely out of tune with uh, with Palestinian Authority, with the people that they represent inside the occupied territory, and the PLO with Palestinians around the world. So that is a good option, but the, the thing that prevents it from being to take full force right now is that the official leadership is still on, stuck on the two-state solution. And I'll just say one more thing real quick, and then I'll let Adam, if you want to say anything, how to help. Okay, I said that it would be great to have a vote from the UAE. Not necessarily the boat needs to sail from here, but what we're doing, these different groups are raising money to get boats. We're identifying boats for them in the Mediterranean, and then they're arranging basically the delegation and everything. That is the top. If you can get a boat from the UAE, that would be dynamic. If you can't get a boat from the UAE, um, we are, do plan to put cargo on these boats, and we do want people to feel like they can, they are invested in this, so maybe they can be part of providing the cargo. And one thing. We recently decided, Adam mentioned, that we want to focus on green technology and, and taking this to Israel, to, sorry, to Gaza under the theme of like 
connect Gaza to the world. Gaza should be open to the world um, so they can become self-sufficient uh, in, in electricity, <coughs> energy, etc. We need people that work or have contacts in these fields that might be willing to, to connect us, get people to donate um, you know, this kind of energy, and maybe even be willing to go uh, to advise uh, in Gaza, etc. So, vote uh, number one, if not at least cargo, uh, would be great. And obviously, getting your friends, family uh, around the world to also contribute in whatever way, and to be watching if your friends and family in in European countries where you need to change the policy more, that they can become you know more active in lobbying efforts there, which is uh, hugely important here, maybe a little less so. Um, but those are two things you can do. Oh. Uh, just to answer the other two questions that are still out there, um, is there a PA role in the siege? I mean, I think that it's, it goes without saying, to some extent that there is. To what extent is still yet, you know, sort of obscured and unknown, but I think uh, to the point that the gentleman made earlier, that there are splits also in Fetah, I think this is not only true, I think that the splits are starting to result in uh, those who question Fetah's current policy, essentially the PA's current policy, are starting to uh, challenge that even more and to push for uh, increased unification of the Palestinian position and to change the current PA position towards the siege on Gaza. So I think we'll see change uh, in that regard soon. In terms of threats that we face in the West, uh, I can only speak about my own personal experience and I know that in the immediate aftermath of the flotilla, um, all the congressmen in my state, which is New York, uh, organized to sign a petition uh, calling for the criminalization of uh, Free Gaza, of uh, IHH, and calling upon all of us you know, to be um, investigated by the CIA, Homeland Security, and all that. It went nowhere. Uh, furthermore, we had a congressman from California who went further and called for the death penalty for uh, anybody who had participated, any American citizen who had participated in the flotilla. So we went to his office on Capitol Hill. Uh, a number of us, including uh, Colonel Ann Wright, who's a former U.S. colonel who uh, re re retired her military career in protest of the U.S. war in Iraq. But um, she came with us, she had been on the floor, so that we offered ourselves up for arrest. The congressman, uh, and all the media was there too. This was an amazing uh, moment because the, all of the major media, including you know, U.S. mainstream <coughs> media, came for this. And um, the congressman completely avoided us. His staff met with us, and then later the, the congressman issued a retraction of his statement. And we've actually started developing ongoing sort of dialogue with his office to explain why this work needs to be done and why, what the real situation is. It's not a victory yet. <laughs> but, but it shows that when we do take this action, we do stand up to the, the bullies out there, the people who are trying to shut us down, we can actually force them to act down. Um, and shows the power of this movement. I think if you're looking at the US, there is a, there is a shift underway. Um, the shift underway is that it's a generational shift. It's also a shift as a result of Israel's actions. Certainly, starting in 2006 with Operation Cap um, the Operation Lebanon, uh, the, military, the war in Lebanon, Operation Cast Lead, and now the flotilla, is the people increasingly are looking at Israel as it needs to be looked at, as the bully in the neighborhood, as the one causing the, the chaos and the security problems in the neighborhood and in the world. And with people like General Petraeus saying flat out that American troops are in danger by Israel's actions in the region, this is forcing more, putting more and more Americans at ease with questioning the U.S. special relationship with Israel um, and opening the door for others to do so. So I see that there's change underway in the United States. It's not where we need it to be in the end, but it's a beginning for sure.